choice she'll be running against Jay Trumbull for the seat currently held by Jimmy Petronas and we get a chance to talk to her about her philosophy of government and the issues in particular in state government. If she were elected, what would she focus on? This won't be a, a candidate forum or a debate, but she'll be asked questions she hasn't been asked before. Stay tuned, pull up the chair and join us. Jamie Shepard, she's the Democratic candidate for Florida House District 6. And Jamie, welcome to the show. So glad to have you. Well, thank you for inviting me. Now, after one of your debates, you told me, Bernie, I'm going to win you over. And I smiled at you and I said, uh, that we have a lot of disagreements. And besides that, I'd probably get fired a second time if I voted for a Democrat. <laughs> oh, no. Don't you know you vote for people instead of parties? I mean, uh, parties aren't even the same. When we were growing up, well, then I'm considerably older than you, I'm sure. But... Parties have sort of lost their bearings. Both parties have uh, lost we, their bearings. And we, so we really have to say, who's the best person you think who will represent mm -hmm. all of our interests here in District 6? Who has a grounding in sensible mm -hmm. judgments? Who's willing not to put uh, political ideology ahead of practicality in moving Florida forward? And that would be me. Well, I'm excited to talk to you about this in detail. And as a matter of fact, I knew you were coming. And uh, you're such a sunshiny candidate that I wore my yellow tie in your honor. Thanks. <laughs> when we, that, first, before we go to break, I'd like to ask you, what impelled you to run? Why did you jump into this? Well, I was actually asked to work on a Republican campaign. And the more I thought about it, I thought there, this particular campaign was not going to look for moderate views. They were so busy running to the right and being so conservative. And I'm not a very conservative person. I'm a very much middle-of-the-road candidate. You actually call yourself a certain political uh, label. What is that? I can never remember. Green Libertarocrat. A green Libertarocrat. <laughs> so you think you could pick out the best of each and then bring that kind of governance? Yes, absolutely. I, my husband's a registered Republican. Believe me. I'm a very centrist person. No, Green, Green Party has its strong points. I have a very strong sense of personal responsibility, the, base, the foundation of the Libertarian Party, and yet I am socially progressive. When we get back, Jamie, I want to ask you about uh, what you consider the proper role of government. Let's talk a little bit about philosophy, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the issues with Jamie Shepard in just a moment. Back with Jamie Shepard, Democratic candidate for House District 6 here in Florida, the State House. And Jamie, let's get right to it. I want to ask you, what do you consider the proper role of government? I'm really one who doesn't want to have a great deal of government interference. I think the gov most people don't even think about government, which is a good thing. Things should sort of run smoothly in the background. Um, I, would be, I would be happy for industry to self-regulate and for businesses to take responsibility for their actions. And if everybody did the right thing, you know, not harming uh, the environment or the individual, we would have very little need for government. Uh, a prime example of that was the parasailing industry. Uh, had that industry actually done something to self-police, we wouldn't be having the requirements that they have now. Those two girls nearly died on our beach and caused insurmountable bad press for us because we hadn't done, because the, the industry had failed to self-regulate. That compels the state to come in, and that shouldn't have been necessary. I think there's two things in a civil society uh, that we, if we as individuals did, we would need limited government. And the first one is do what you say you're going to do. You know, honor your contracts, right? And the second one is don't encroach upon each other. Don't hurt each other. Those are the two big rules in a free society. I'm not sure I believe uh, in uh, a lot of government regulation because even in, even in their case, we know this is a dangerous thing. Uh, industries that are regulated highly by the government 
are not particularly doing very well with the financial industry. As, as well regulated as they are, we still got a Bernie Madoff. That's what tort law is for, don't you think? It's a little tough to have tort law when you have 17-year-old girls from Indiana. Uh, in contracts, you assume that both parties understand mm -hmm. the parameters. You got two girls who are 17 years old on it vacation was, from Indiana. What terrifying. are they supposed to know? Yeah. That uh, you can't. If that's the case, where it's one thing if we are responsible, understanding adults, and we have an army of lawyers behind them. All those girls had on was sunscreen and money in their yeah, pocket, was, looking for a good time, uh, and that's what we should be working on. I, I, I was right there uh, in that general area, uh, living in that area when that occurred, and it was absolutely terrifying. Let's get to uh, something that you talk about often in the debates, and that is best practices. When it comes to policy, that is your approach, isn't it? Yes, it is. What do you I mean, mean by that? Well, best practices is a business term. You know, people aren't familiar with it. You know, what do we? What do other places do that work? I'm a very practical person. I have a lot of business background. I worked in government as well. I was a 911 director, and so we always look for those things that what has been effective in the past. We don't need to spend time or money, for that matter, on reinventing a wheel. Have, have other states or other counties do are people at the local level have a good idea of how things should happen most of most in most businesses the employees if you add, if you actually empower your employees to buy into your business and work on your success they can tell you what the problems are at the bottom sure, and yeah. that can help you solve the problems we need to be listening to people and one of my cornerstones would be uh, there ought to be a law and some of those times said there ought to be a law to get rid of a bad regulation. Yeah. And that's what the, that's what the legislature can do. Yeah. Let's listen to people yeah. and find out what isn't working and how can government be more responsive. This is where I think you and I disagree the most. This is our fundamental disagreement when it comes to government because I think that you view government as a potential corrective device. And I don't. I don't incentives are different than business. And here's what I mean, real quickly. With government, there are four ways we can spend money. We can spend money on ourselves with our own money. And if we use our own money and spend money on ourselves, we care a lot about the price and the quality. We can spend our own money on somebody else like a gift. And if we do that, we care a lot about price, but not as much about quality. We can spend somebody else's money on us like an expense account. And when we do that, we care a lot about the quality, but not so much about the price. That's why we eat steaks when we go out on those business trips, right? And then there's a fourth way, and this is the way government spends money. It spends somebody else's money on somebody else. And when you do that, there's no constraint for quality or for price. There's none. As a matter of fact, when you add on to that the bribe of a vote, I think the, the incentives are perverted for government to possibly use best business practices. Oh, I would disagree on quality. I think we're driven because it's our tax dollars, too. I may get paid a salary for being a legislator, but I know that that's your tax dollars and mine. I think it's incumbent upon us, and in fact, I think that's one of the things that's lost, is that we have to be focused on what's quality and what's effective and efficient. I mean, that good enough for government work, that's the problem. That's what I'm trying to run against. I'm not trying to have some overarching uh, control on your personal freedoms. No, you're supposed to have personal freedoms. You're supposed to be responsible and be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. I'm not interested in, in increasing government. I'm interested in having it work better to be more efficient. And I think there's some ways that we need to do that. When we get back, I'm going to ask you about quality. We're going to look at government quality versus quality in what I call the real economy. A lot of people call it the private sector. I wonder then why quality is usually worse in government than in the real economy. I want to ask you about that, and I want to get into the specific policy that you want to go to Tallahassee and push for. We'll be right back with James Shepard in just a moment. With Jamie Shepard, and right before the break, we were talking about government. She says that government ought to use what she calls best practices. It's a business term. Government ought to do what it can to be efficient, to be more efficient. And it's my argument that because of the nature of government, it's impossible. And Jamie, you, before the break, you said, especially with quality, because it's stuff that we use, government can provide good quality, you argue. But when we take a look at things that government offers and, and, and the real economy or a private, the private sector offers, it's virtually always inferior with government. Take a look at health care. Take a look at just about any service 
it's inferior with government. Um, why do you think that government can provide as good or better services than in the private world? Government's role isn't to supplant private enterprise. Those things that don't make sense for a company to do, that's the role of government. The post office. If it was a great business model, you wouldn't be sitting here, you would be doing it. Right. It's not, because you can't, it just isn't reasonable. The space program. Big things, water systems. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to have interstates. It doesn't make sense for you to have bridges that your private company builds. On your property, fine. But those things that are the common good that a society, a civilized society relies on, that's what you have government for. And you can say, yeah, we, you have to be accountable. Mm -hmm. You have to be accountable for those dollars. Contracting needs to be transparent. And that's a word that says, well, what does that really mean? It means I need to know where those monies go. There was an article in today's News Herald about corporations within state universities. And then all that really is is an effort to shield, to shield how we know tax dollars are being spent. Now, if those aren't tax dollars, if those aren't state employees, then they've got, then it should operate like a state business, like a private company, and we don't have any business interfering well, you, with that. And you talk about uh, common goods, and I think of the preamble to the Constitution, and it talks about promoting the general welfare, common goods. But yes. here's what I think. We, common good, what are common goods? You know, since we as humans think in terms of concepts and definitions, let's do that. Roads, right. education. Things that we all use. Water. Things that we all use. All right. So what and I think, and I can agree with that, uh, especially in state government. So when we find though something that only a certain segment of the population uses, I argue that we have now found a special interest. And I include Social Security. I include Medicare. I include all of these things. My question for you would be, what are the limits to government? I say the limits are in the Constitution. If it's not in the Constitution. We haven't given the government the authority to do that. Would you disagree with that? Oh, women weren't even weren't even deemed citizens. So yeah, we got an issue. No, we, the Constitution was designed deliberately by the founding fathers to be amended for a reason. Well, let's amend it rather than just supersede it. I'm a, I'm open to that. We need, but you know, we really need to talk. I'm really interested in Tallahassee. Sure, so. I got you. Well, I still think that constitutional principles will apply. They work for me. But well, let's talk about the constitutional amendments that are coming that are on the ballot this time. For the for, one, for the state of Florida. One, two, and three. Yeah. You know. Well, let, let's. Um, some of the questions that I heard asked of you in the candidate forums, I wanted to yell. I got a question. A follow up question. So now I get a chance to do it. Stand your ground. Uh, as a Democrat, you know that uh, your constituents are going to wonder where you are on that issue. Where are you? You have a right to self-defense. You don't have a right to use unreasonable force. Um, my complaint with stand your ground was that it wasn't specific enough. It was written by lawyers. They should have written what they meant. I mean, you have a right. You don't have a right to pursue someone. It has to be limited as to how you use that. You have a, we have a right to bear arms. I don't have a problem with that. I'm a gun owner. That's not, to me, that's not an issue. But to be able to use force with, to meet force with force responsibly, mm -hmm. that's the issue. Well, you know, to, it, it came in response in 2005 to people being sued after they defended themselves. So Stand Your Ground did two things. It said, number one, you have no duty to retreat. Because if you must retreat first by law, you could put yourself in a, you could put yourself in a dangerous situation. Sure. The second thing Stand Your Ground did was it protected you from lawsuits afterward. And those are two things that I think are very important to keep. So I don't want to use uh, a, a tragic situation to do away with something that is really protecting oh. us. And by the way, it, it, um, black Floridians benefit from it more than anybody else because they often live in high risk areas and, and you know, they're able to defend themselves and not be sued afterwards. So I hope that you'll support Stand Your Ground. I do support Stand Your Ground. I support the reasonable implementation of it. I support, I strongly support responsible gun ownership, keeping, keeping guns out of the hands of felons, keeping out guns out of the hands of the mentally ill, we need, and, but these are, t these are touchy issues are, because, that's of, a privacy, because mm -hmm. of privacy laws. Yeah, but sure. we have a general, a common good responsibility to for the general welfare of the nation. Fair enough. Let's, these things. let's go just because of time constraints. And I'm happy to have you back on. And by the way, I want you to know that her opponent, Jay Trumbull, the uh, Republican candidate, I have invited several times. And he's not coming on the show. So we have Jamie Shepard, Jay Trumbull, 
doesn't want to come on and answer questions. And, and Jamie, one thing you and I certainly agree on, and God bless you for it, is you'll answer any question and you believe in free and open debate Absolutely. and let everybody make up their mind. God bless you on that. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the budget. The budget's about $77 billion now, uh, $8 billion more than when uh, the conservative, or Rick Scott, took office. Is it too much, and how could you reduce it? Well, I think if you've got money, if you've got money that's coming in, I mean, the budget follows the economy, right? So when we don't have money coming in, and we have a tourist, we have a to strong, too strong, a tourism-based economy, our source of revenues primarily are sales tax. It's great when people are down here from out of state, and God love them if they're down here with heads in beds and eating out and enjoying our beaches and buying gas. Terrific. That's the best thing that can happen to us. That's revenue. So that revenue is going to come in. We have a, an obligation to try to say, what should we be spending this on? And so let's pick the three, you know, the three big ones. Uh, infrastructure, uh, stormwater control. Um, if we can do, we have to do something with education. Let's work on improving education and try to, and try to pilot programs that work. Try to figure out what doesn't work, but give things a chance to work or fail and then go forward. All right, you, you mentioned infrastructure, storm, and education. Citizens insurance, I'd love to ask you about that. We've got another short segment. We're running short on time, but I want to get as many answers as I can. Thanks for being with us, and we'll be right back with Jamie Shepard in just a moment. All right, Jamie Shepard back with us. She is the Democratic candidate for Florida House District 6. The seat currently held by Jimmy Petronas. Her opponent is Jay Trumbull. And again, I've invited Jay Trumbull on the show. No response at all. So we've got Jamie, and I'm delighted to have you, Jamie. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. I asked you right before the break about um, citizens' property insurance. It was designed by uh, Governor Charlie Crist at the time to be a last resort for property insurance. It is now the first resort and I think the fourth largest insurance company in the country. And it's, it's not solvent. Is it a problem? And what would you do about it? Well, I'm glad to see. I mean, again, this is going to be this is market driven. And now that we haven't had an insurance companies are really risk averse despite being in the risk management mm -hmm. business. We haven't had a huge storm. Lucky, yeah. Thank you. Was, but, and so it has encouraged more insurance kind of private industry to come back into it. And to citizens credit, they have been throwing people off the lists. I'm one of them. And, and I was happy to do it. I actually saved money by going with a private, going with private companies. And that's really what it should be doing. Now, you're going to have high-risk areas, and a lot of that's going to also be tied into that building code. Do we allow people to rebuild houses right on the water in storm areas that we know are going to get wiped off? My answer is yes, but you've got to pay for it. Yes, exactly it. You want to take the risk? Yeah. You have to shoulder the burden to do so. Education. I'm not going to give you enough time on this because the sand is going so fast through the hourglass. We have 90 seconds. Um, take about a minute to talk about education, then I'm going to let you talk to the, uh, to the viewers. We're the fifth lowest funder of per capita education in the country. But what we should really be looking at, and we have to do something to help students, A, stay in school, strengthen our truancy laws so, still, so children are in school, strengthen truancy laws from the aspect of having, putting responsibility on parents to put children, to keep children in school, and then engage them and get them focused on those skills that will help them in life and will help them actually get a job. We're on the right track with workforce training and career academies starting in our junior high and going going into our high school so that kids who are not college bound, and even if they are college bound, have a feel for an industry that they might actually be able to get a job. Jamie, into. I can tell you are passionate about oh, education, yes. and so am I, and I think we're going to have some real disagreements. You and I should take this up soon again, because I've got so much to talk to you about. Talk to the viewers and uh, let them know why they should vote for you. It's important in the next few years. I mean, midterms don't seem to count to money people, but this is the but the state legislature controls your taxes, can work on your child's education, can help you have whatever medical in but health care that you might need. These are issues that happen in the midterm election. I encourage you to vote for a person who is very middle of the road, who is a military spouse, who has experience in business, in government, and in life, and is committed 
to working and representing all of the citizens of District 6, which is almost all of Bay County. We can do this, and we can do better. Say yes to Shepard. Thank you, Jamie, for being with us. And again, I will invite uh, Jay Trumbull and try to get him on. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next week. Turn some pages